Hello everybody, my name is Jenny. I'm here on my channel called Reality TV Breakdown, my sub channel to Senior Perspective. You can check that out if you're interested in Sister Wives. But today we're gonna to talk about Vanderpump Rules. I'm gonna give you my opinions, feedback, review of season 11, episode six. Let's go. Coming to you with full confessions to begin with. I had a really crazy week. There's been a bunch of stuff that's happened. It's made me really not feel like getting on camera and doing any recording. On top of that, my son is home from spring break from college. So I obviously want to spend as much time with him as possible. So I apologize for the delay in getting this out. And it will probably be quite short because although I watched the show, I took no notes. So I'm just going to be kind of glancing through the show and some of the pictures and talking about what I see on the screen and what I remember from the show and what I liked. I will say it was kind of, this season has been really slow to me. I mean, maybe we got spoiled last season <laughs> when it comes to drama. I mean, I feel bad that it's at the expense of Ariana, but on the flip side, Ariana is way better off without Tom Sandoval that it all worked out as it should in the end, as much as the trauma they had to go through. So knowing that, it makes me not as guilty about enjoying the fact of last season and how amazing and sensational it was. That being said, this season, somewhat of a downer. So it opens up, they're still at Lake Tahoe in a lake house that looks lovely. We start off with Lala talking to Sheena early in the morning and they both kind of agree that it's still weird that Tom Sandoval is there and that yeah, they're kind of talking to him, but on the flip side, if either one of them would have planned this trip, there's no way they would have invited him. And they're worried about him thinking that he's just now back in the group and that that's not how it's going to be. Um, Sheena's just really struggling. I really had a lot of sympathy for in this in this episode for Sheena because... She obviously really valued her relationship with Tom Sandoval, really valued it, and is now so hurt by what he did and then about the restraining order that Raquel took out against her, and it just triggered her OCD in a way that it hadn't before, and she just really went into a spiral. So she is justified in her anger toward him. Like, her mental health was affected by this whole situation, uh, plus, she lost one of her best friends and one of her other best friends now had her boyfriend of X years cheat on her. And like, it's just a lot happened um, because Sheena was so ingrained in that relationship. She was like best friends with both Ariana and Tom. And so it's a mess. And Sheena keeps crying about it. She just keeps breaking down. I think it's good that she's that in touch with her emotions, that it's coming out. I think this is going to be good for her healing. But she's starting to feel bad for Tom, that nobody's there for him. And on the flip side, she's like, nothing's ever going to be the same again. And I'm always going to put Ariana first. So it can't be the way it once was. It's, it's just crazy. We cut to a kind of benign scene that's just sort of a episode filler where Katie is going over to see Ariana shoot um, probably still pictures and maybe a book cover possibly for a cocktail book that she's doing all on her own. We always saw her doing the cocktail book before, but Tom Sandoval inserted himself and did it along with her. So it was their book. So now she's doing her own cocktail book. And of course she has like revenge drinks and <laughs> woman empowerment drinks and the names that she gave to all these different cocktails that are in the book kind of go along with her life each chapter is sort of like another one like and it was her whole relationship so it starts off with like falling in love being in love breakup revenge blah 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 or the different chapters so that's cute so the two of them just talk about the same stuff they always talk about wanting to get the sandwich shop up and running there's nothing they can do about the sandwich shop they're just waiting on inspections to clear and go through and um yeah and then it's just a photo shoot and they're talk about how happy they are that they are not at the lake. So then we cut to the guided meditation that Tom Sandoval arranged for everybody to have. Sheena 
is still an emotional wreck. You can tell that her marriage with Brock is on the rocks. We've been seeing that. They've been showing it, which is nice. They're not hiding anything. So you have to respect her for it. Agree or disagree with what's going on. And I agree. But I mean, if you think differently, I get it. But they're showing it. So many of them hide what's really happening behind closed doors, i.e. Ariana and Tom Sandoval for how many years. So Brock and Sheena haven't been getting along great. It's predominantly because she's her postpartum, although it was two years ago, so I don't understand that. But her OCD, I'll, I'll accept that. Her OCD is preventing her from allowing anybody to watch her child because she has all these intrusive thoughts that something horrible is going to happen to her child. So she feels like she needs to be the one responsible. In fact, she went through a period of time where she didn't even trust herself to be with her child. She wanted somebody else to be there too, just in case something went wrong. There was two people there. So she's working through that. She does things alone on her own with her child. And um, this is an interesting episode. And this may come up later on, but I'll talk about it now. There was, Brock made reference in the past to your mom is putting thoughts in your head like when they went shopping for the bathing suit. And then it was kind of dismissed and she's like, I don't know why we're talking about this now. Well, it was discussed more on the show and I find this very interesting. It may be a lesson I can learn for myself as a (laughs) mother of a 20-something year old. I have two daughters who are in their 20s that are both married. No kids, but I, I will learn from this. And that is that Sheena is only trusting her mom to watch um, summer moon as we've seen in the past and then she kind of branched out and like her sister could watch too and and uh, a friend is now sort of the babysitter ish situation and so she's slowly starting to branch out a little bit and of course Brock she has complete trust in Brock according to Brock all of these intrusive thoughts that she has this OCD this can being convinced that something horrible is going to happen he believes is largely sparked on by her mom. I don't think he's buying the postpartum OCD. And I'm not either because it's two years out. Don't Postpartum ends within a few months. Sometimes just weeks, but uh, months for sure. Like less than a year. She's, this Summer Moon celebrated her two-year birthday last summer. So I'm not buying that either. Me personally, not a psychologist. I might be wrong. Okay. So Brock points out that she's much better off because she's starting to do things on her own with Summer Moon and realizing she's okay and she can do it. And she's away from her mom and her mom is not putting all those thoughts in her head anymore. And then she admitted that her mom is very critical of her and always saying, no, you got to do it this way. No, you got to do it this way. That's wrong. That's wrong. And she's so neurotic now about doing everything wrong that that's what precipitated these thoughts or contributed to it anyway. Maybe it started off postpartum OCD and then with her mom's inserting herself into this, it has turned into something so much worse. I can see that now. And then it cut to showing a, you know, a clip of the mom being critical of her. and Like, don't do it like that. Do it like this. So it's just sort of this beast that was created. And Sheena, God bless her, in one of the talking heads even said, I take Summer Moon by myself on little jaunts now. And it's actually really nice and relaxing because I'm making all the decisions for what we do. And then I realize that was an okay decision. Nobody's critiquing me. Oh, bless her heart. She needs to get the mama out of her house. 100%. Not that mama can't keep coming over and visiting and she can't still watch Summer Moon at times, but I don't think her mom is doing her any service by talking to Sheena this way, especially in the condition that Sheena's in. She needs to step away and I can't believe that there's not a psychologist saying this. Maybe there is and Sheena's so deep into it that she can't see it for what it is and she's scared to tell her mom. Because clearly if her mom is that intrusive that she's so influenced by her opinions, she's going to have a hard time telling mom, you need to step away. Oh, wow. I found that part really interesting. And so this is where the arguments with Sheen and Brock are coming from. He wants her mom not living at their house all the time and telling Sheena everything she's doing wrong. 
understandably, they're a young couple, recently married, brand new baby. They should be together. It should be the two of them. The mom should not be there all the time. So that turned into other things. And we saw on the last episode how Sheena's getting upset by all kinds of little things that he's doing, doing laundry wrong, do, you know, everything he's doing is wrong because she's just in a bad mood about the whole situation. And that is now spilled over to this trip. Apparently he wanted to golf in the morning. He told her he would just do the front nine and then come back. She said, "We ha- you have to be back by this time because we're going to be doing this yoga thing. He said, fine. He left at like five or six in the morning to do like really early golf. I'm guessing this is probably happening. This is like morning yoga, but it probably is like 11 or 1130 <laughs> um, when everybody eventually got up and he was not there on time. He was still making his way back. And they waited and they didn't start until he got there. And Sheena is just getting more and more and more upset with him. The longer it's taking him to be there. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, but, you know, it was like far away and it took a while. And she's like, I thought you were just going to do the front nine. He's like, yeah, but the money got involved. And like, he didn't have a good argument. He did not have a good argument whatsoever. I'm on Sheena's side on this one. He should have been there. So they all sit down. Sheena's on the very end. And then it's Tom Sandoval, Tom Schwartz, Lala, Brock, Allie, James Kennedy, and Hippie. (laughs) She goes through some breathing exercises and says, go back to back with the person that's next to you. But because we have an uneven number, one group will be three. Well, Brock was sitting by James and Allie. And he's like, I'll just join you guys. He really should have joined Schwartz and Lala because... Allie and James are a couple. Schwartz and Lala aren't, so it would be like three people who aren't really part of a couple. But Sheena yells out to him, come over here, be part of this. And he's like, no, 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 I'm going to be with these guys. So that hurt her even more. And so she started crying right away. And I know part of it is just that she's upset with where the status of her relationship with Brock, how he wasn't being respectful of her that day, how he wasn't listening to her, how he wasn't keeping his word. She's really upset and emotional about all of it. Now she has to go back to back with Tom Sandoval, who she does not want to touch. Just leaning up against him just triggered her. Like she started crying. She eventually got up. Brock went after her. He's like, listen, it's going to be okay. Let's continue this. He wants Sheena to push through because he thinks this is going to be good for her. And in the talking head, he said the reason he didn't go by Sheena is because he wanted her to be forced to have this interaction with Tom Sandoval to help her start to heal. In the end, I guess it kind of worked. She came back. They did the breathing exercise. They talked about what they would say to each other that the exercise was say something to the person across from you if you knew this was the last time you were ever going to see them so that got them emotional and they were sharing and she was touched by it she left running away and was crying in her bedroom afterwards but it was because she's letting her guard down she saw him let his guard down for the first time and that just made it even more of an emotional event so A lot happening, a lot of tears, a lot of emotion in this episode. So Sheena is texting with Ariana and giving updates on what's going on. And she mentioned about the situation that happened that morning and how it was very uncomfortable and she was sobbing through it. But she did notice that Tom was um, showing remorse for the first time that she has ever seen. Out at lunch, we have... Ariana eating with Katie again so Ariana is sharing this information that she got from Sheena in the text and Katie's not having it Katie's rolling her eyes Katie's not happy with Sheena Katie is never happy with Sheena have I not said this since the beginning of the season to you guys since I started making recordings ever since season one Katie has never liked Sheena Katie has never been happy with anything Sheena has ever said or done. The fact that they're friends right now is almost just bizarre and weird because Katie can never be nice to her. She just can't. So of course, she is not being at all sympathetic and she's just telling Ariana, stay away. Well, also keep in mind, Katie and Ariana have never been really close because Katie has always hated Tom Sandoval. Now, Sheena did originally too. Sheena would tell Ariana, 
he's been a cheater in the past. I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you getting in this relationship. And Ariana just kept barking back and saying, this is my relationship and it's different now and it's fine. And I remember Sheen at one point just going, okay, okay. From here on forward, I will accept that. And eventually she really embraced him and embraced them as a couple and years went on and she was happy with them. Katie, never. Katie never liked Sandoval. And so she is not enjoying this information that Sheena had a moment of seeing Sandoval seem truly sorry. So I think she's trying to be a good girlfriend here and be like pro team Ariana. Um, but I can't help but to think when I'm watching it, it's coming across as anti-Sheena and less pro Ariana. We'll see how it all pans out. Okay, here's a juicy part that happened. I'd forgotten. I think it was late at night when I watched it. That's why I wasn't taking notes. And I just thought, wah, 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 it's fine. There is an interview with Brock. And Brock points out that during all this whole scandal drama that was happening last year, all of a sudden, there's a story, probably in the sun, um, that said, because you can't trust anything that's in there. There was a story. Let's see if it shows. Okay, it's from an article from someplace called Holler, H-O-L-R. Never heard of it. I don't know if anybody actually watches or reads it, so I don't know. But apparently it insinuates Raquel actually also had an affair with Brock, which was complete BS and not true whatsoever. But this article came out. So... Obviously, Sheena's really upset by it. He's really upset by it. So his team or Sheena's team reached out to the people who wrote the article to the, I don't know if it was the author of it or if it was just the publisher of the paper and said, where did this information come from? Tell us where it came from. And they said, you need to contact Tom Sandoval's camp for more information. So, which makes sense, Tom Sandoval's camp doing damage control is trying to make it look like, well, he's not the only one that had a relationship. So did Brock. Who would else be, who would be crazier? Can't be Tom Schwartz because nobody would care and he's divorced anyway. But Brock, who's been married to Sheena and they're in a loving, committed relationship, that would be news. So they put that out in the media that it happened. Why do people even read Anything that's in these sub, you know, if it's not in People Magazine or I don't even know if Variety is that reliable anymore. If it's not in People Magazine, I wouldn't believe it. Or you hear it from the source. Everyone has their own podcast. Everyone has their own social media. Go to the person's social media or check out People Magazine. Other than that, I don't believe anything I see or hear. So there is an argument as they all go to go in this gondola to go up a hill to just have a lookout point maybe. I don't know what they did once they got up there. I think, you know, they maybe ate and then came back down. So as they're waiting to go up in the gondola, Brock is having a conversation with Tom Sandoval that continues in the gondola on the way up. And Brock is like, you know, I didn't appreciate, you know, Sandoval's still like, I don't know why people aren't getting over. And Brock's like, you know, what you did to me is personal, which obviously affects Sheena too. And Sheena had the restraining order. There was a lot going on with them. Tom Sandoval, oh, I didn't have anything to do with that. Well, we now know we can't believe a word out of Tom Sandoval's. He will say something like it. it's emphatically true and he gets himself all emotional about things and he's 100% lying through it. So can't trust him. So of course he's making a big fuss. I don't know what you're talking about. That wasn't my camp. That wasn't my people. And he's like, listen, I contacted the paper. They said it was. And all he could say was like, but it wasn't. <laughs> All right. Why would they why would they say that? They would just say we can't tell our source, but they gave their source away. Oh my goodness. They wouldn't make up a fake source. Sandoval denies it all. That's the end of it. Later on in the day, they end up on this yacht for a nice little cruise and booze. And it's going pretty smoothly. Ariana and Katie are together again back in LA. They're meeting with their consultant chef lady um, who redid the whole menu and also helped consult. There actually was a different person who did the whole design of the restaurant, but she has her fingers in a lot of things. So they're going to do some interviewing to get employees 
for the shop. I think they need like four employees or something, maybe four positions they have to fill. The chef consultant kind of took over all the interviews and was asking all the questions and didn't let Katie and Ariana ask too many. According to the editing, I think this might just be for the television show. She probably, they probably said this would be funny if she asked lots of questions and you guys were like looking at each other like what? Because they were doing that as opposed to just inserting questions. They just kept going like and looking at each other. So made for television scene, fully scripted, annoying. So while they're on the boat, Sheena FaceTimes with Ariana um this is during or kind of at the end of the interview things there's nobody there being interviewed and they're talking about the same situation again Sheena reiterates the same stuff Ariana actually Ariana handled it really well and said I'm most concerned for you after everything he did to you I don't want for you to have this guy in your life anymore so it was a very nice angle and perspective for her to say that as opposed to you can't be friends with him anymore because I'm telling you I won't be friends with you if you're friends with him you know she had the very selfish point of view before but she's able to see this a little bit differently now which I appreciated she got off the phone and of course Katie took a different angle <laughs> she just kind of made fun of Sheena well if you're just saying this then that means you want to get together with him again and what are you talking about how come you don't know what you want and it's just like nobody's talking to you Katie nobody's talking to you Katie zip it bye bye Moving on, we go back to the boat. Hours have gone by. Brock's been drinking a lot. <laughs> Everybody's been drinking a lot. I, I mean, not Sheena. Sheena's actually been sick, but she's also been being dry because of the whole medication she's on and all that. And she's trying to stay sober to get her balance of everything okay with her antidepressants, etc. But you can tell from her voice that she's also been ill. <clears throat> And Ariana made reference to it, asking her if she's feeling better. Other than that, pretty much everyone's drinking. Well, obviously, Lala's not drinking. But everyone else, and James should not be drinking. So he's, and Allie's there. So he's definitely not drinking, too. So it's pretty tame. And then Lala sits down to have a conversation with Tom Sandoval. And she expresses how what she wants the apology for and like everybody has a different perspective from this and everyone got hurt in a different way but for her it was because the past year he kept calling her in person and putting out on social media and that that she's a fake and she's a fraud and he kept saying that over and over again and they showed different clips of times that it came up and she's like it was so hard to fight against that how do you just prove you're not and she's so upset with it meanwhile the fake and the fraud is the guy who's having this relationship with his girlfriend's best friend for seven months. So the seven month period of time where he's a liar and a fraud is going on and he's telling Lala she is, but he never apologized for that. He can't understand this, can't comprehend it, ends up in a fight with her, turns it around saying how it's all about him and can't she not understand what he was going through, et cetera, et cetera. Lala loses it. There's a screaming match. She ends up leaving and going to the back of the boat. Everybody else is just kind of watching. <laughs> I mean, it's par for the course with this group, right? And they haven't had much drama anyway, so they probably thought, well, here it is. Lala's serving it up for us. In the end, it ends up being fine. Everyone's upset, but then they're not upset. And Sheena talks to Sandoval and explains to him what Lala's trying to say to him. He's like, well, I didn't understand it like that. Whatever. He then apologizes to Lala. They have a hug. Everything is fine. They get back to the place. Brock crashes. He passes out. So the, the weekend ends or... This is their final night and Schwartz points out that they're all just being lame because everyone's just going to bed. Brock's already passed out. Everyone else is going to bed. I'm like, they're all in their like mid thirties now. Like they don't need to be partying again tonight. They were out the other night. It's the last night. Get a good night's rest before you go back. But Schwartz is still a child inside. That being said, <laughs> there is still some immaturity 
that is demonstrated on Sheena's part because she's upset. Apparently when they were out at dinner the other night, there was some person who recognized them and I don't know if it was their birthday or an engagement or something, but she wanted a picture with all of them. And so they got together and all put their arms around each other and took a picture with this girl. The girl posts it on social media. In the picture is Tom Sandoval and he is sitting here. He is standing right next to Sheena with his arms around her. Not really close. There's like space between them, but still they're like in the line. They have their arms around each other. So in the picture, Tom is actually closer to Brock. He has his arm around Brock, but he like leans over like, I'm by Sheena too. <laughs> it was, um, it looked actually to me, it looked a little bit desperate, but nevertheless, it's basically their whole group with this one girl in it. And now apparently there's a lot of comments being said about how Sheena's a traitor, et cetera, et cetera, because she's socializing now and going out with Tom Sandoval, which is how it looks in the picture, but not how it is in real life. So the most interesting part about this is that Lala is saying to Sheena, they're both laying in bed scrolling on their social media. Sheena's in tears because she's all upset about this. And Lala's like, where are you even seeing this? This is not in my algorithm at all. Sheena said this whole thing blew up because the girl posted it and all that. But Lala's like, I, it, how can it not be popped up in my algorithm? <laughs> like they're all connected through Vanderpump Rules and they're all friends. And Sheena and Lala are very close now with their kids being the same age. She's like, it's not popping it up at all. How are you seeing this? And she's like, oh, it's everywhere. She's like, what are you talking about? She said, are you searching for it? And Sheena said, no, it's just every single person who's tweeted me all day. Okay, so it's not showing up on social media. Just somebody saw it and they're tweeting you. Now, every single person who's tweeted her all day, there could be three people. I think Sheena's a little over emotional right now and a little immature about the whole social media thing. She didn't get a mean text from Ariana who's upset by it or anything like that. It's just randoms are messaging her. So Lala tells her, you're searching for it. Stop searching for it. And she goes, I'm not. I'm just here in my mentions. She goes, what are you going in your mentions for? Why are you in your mentions? I don't even know what mentions are. But I'm assuming on social media, on Instagram and that, that you can click on whenever ever somebody mentions you. And that's what your mentions are. So that's what Sheena's on. Yeah, Sheena does not need to be on that. She needs to grow up and realize she makes enough money. She has enough followers. She doesn't have to care about the little peons and little people who are saying negative things. Stop looking in your mentions. And that's what Lala says to her. Get out of your mentions. You're looking for it if you're in your mentions. Stop doing that. Lala being the voice of reason and the most mature person on this season this year blows my mind blows my mind did not like that girl she was so immature she was so young I mean it's been on for I mean a decade they should have grown up and they all have but there's little bits like this where you see Sheena doing this that you're just like just stop doing that why are you doing that to make yourself upset what you don't know doesn't hurt you who cares if a nobody says something negative move on so that's how this episode ends basically Sheena keeps spiraling down more and more and more. I don't know if this is partly the OCD or the depression or the anxiety that she's struggling with that's getting in her head and messing with her. I don't know if it's because she's not in a great spot with Brock right now and things are going on. She feels like Ariana is not being responsive to her when she shares that she's struggling with this. Ariana just tells her, he's a bad person. You shouldn't be struggling with this. Just cut him off. She's not doing well. And that's pretty much how it ended with her not doing well. And Lala not being that sympathetic with Ariana saying she deserves everything she's getting, but she's getting Dance with the Stars and all kinds of endorsements and all this and everything is going great with her life. So Sheena shouldn't be concerned with what she thinks, I guess is the angle it's coming with. It came across a little bit like Lala's a bit jealous of Ariana. Um, and she probably is. All these girls want all this stuff and they're not getting it. But Sheena points out she has always wanted to do Dancing with the Stars. And when Ariana got it, she was genuinely very happy for her. And I believe that. 
Sheena from season one has always seemed like she was a pure soul to me. Well, at least season two. Season one I wasn't sure of because I w- it took a while to get the whole all the information together about the whole affair. But at least by season two, maybe the end of season one, I was team Sheena. Although I kept thinking like it's not real, it's not real, it's not real. But since then with all the interviews with other people who know her, who've talked about her from her podcast, she really is just a sweet girl. A little self-absorbed, a little too concerned what other people think of her, but genuinely a sweet soul who cares about other people. I think Lala has a little bit of jealousy and I think we're going to see more of that come out this season. So Katie's going to be upset with Sheena because Sheena is a little bit vulnerable and willing to give a little bit of slack to Tom Sandoval and Lala is going to be upset with Ariana because Ariana is being so successful and all this stuff and Ariana has been a little bit of a diva in all of this but based on that last conversation she had with Sheena it looks like she's getting away from that diva-ness but we'll see. I'll be back next week with another recap. I was able to get quite a bit out of this for not taking notes. Maybe I should do them all this way. All right, you take care. See you next week. Bye.